Look what we're going to use today. Sherwin-Williams Primer X, Prime RX, Peel Bonding Primer, also known as Peel Bond. You'll hear it referred to as Peel Bond, Peel Bond Primer, Prime RX. Great stuff. As far as tools, it doesn't really take much. So you've got your Peel Bond Primer. I've got my handy paint pail made in USA. That's awesome. Uh, it's got a super thin liner, also made in the USA. It has a magnetic, it's got a little magnet there that keeps my brush attached and keeps it from falling down all the way into the paint. And uh, you don't hold this by the handle, you slide your hand all the way in it, and that way it's just kind of, this is soft rubber, and it's just kind of wedged in place. This thing is awesome. I will put a link where you can get one of these and uh, I mean, I've got a quart of paint in here where I can take it up the ladder with me. This thing is super stable. Love it. Can't work without it, I'm telling you. I've got a purdy scraper, and I don't mean purdy as in you sure got a purdy mouth. I mean purdy, P-U-R-D-Y is the brand. I'll put a link in the description for this. You can do damage with this, so um, make sure you keep it with see one side has the bevel the other side is flat put the flat side down bevel goes up that's how it works don't put that bevel down and start digging in you know use the tool at the angle it's supposed to be used at and uh here's my brush this is a party brush medium stiff this is a three inch i can cover a lot of area with this but it's still small enough the three inch that i can get into corners and actually even do trim around windows and stuff um, with this three inch the medium stiff is important for use with this product with the peel bond primer the medium stiff will allow these bristles to flex and get down in nooks and crannies get down in crevices cracks where uh, things are peeling which is the whole point even get into pinholes if you use one that's too soft it's just going to slop around. You're not going to have the ability to really get those bristles into the crevices. If you get one that's too stiff, it's uh, going to end up being a really thin, thin finish. It's going to have a ton of brush marks that go all the way, all the way thin and expose your surface. The point of this product is to not only adhere your peeling surfaces, but to also put a, like a candy shell. It makes your home like a, like a hard you know, melt in your mouth, not in your hand piece of candy where it has this candy shell to protect it from weather. And if you caulk your home out correctly, then you've got literally a completely uh, weather tight, you know, latex shell around your home. And uh, that's how I want it. I want this as pretty and natural as this cedar is. I want to cover it up in this case. It's from 1967, already shows a little bit of age. I'm just going to put a shell on it. We'll deal with this in, you know, 12 to 15 years when it's time to refinish this. We'll sand it down mechanically and do a, a real good uh, strip down restoration. I'm 40 now, so maybe I'll do that whenever I'm 55. But right now we're going to uh, just do a really nice durable finish without taking this finish down. There's the beam that we'll be working on. It's pretty ugly right now, so we'll get out there and take a look at it and see exactly what we're dealing with start prepping it for the coating with our scrapers and sanding sponge all right this is a manufactured beam meaning it's made up of a bunch of smaller boards that were adhered together with glue and pressure and that's a real beam but it's called a manufactured beam so it's not just from one giant slab uh, and these are continuous all the way through the home it's a really really cool and desirable architectural feature but this has been neglected I bought this home two years ago I rented for 15 years through my 20s and early 30s and didn't learn how to take care of stuff so I should have coated this as soon as we bought it 
and it wouldn't be in this shape but that's okay here we are we're gonna resolve that right now Our goal with this scraper is not really to get in and gouge stuff out. Let it remove what wants to come off. You know, I just want to get the flaking stuff that's not adhered to the wood underneath removed. But if it's adhered enough that it's not going to come off with this scraper, then we're going to leave it on. It's blown pretty hard up here. Check it out. There goes all the autumn leaves, fall colors getting blown off the trees. Gotta get this house ready for winter. 80 grit sanding sponge. Whoop. There it went <laughs> off the balcony. Gotta go chase my sanding sponge.